took the game to Real Madrid, but you, you just couldn't get the breakthrough that you needed. Yeah, um, I feel like we we played well. We had a lot of chances. I think we definitely had more and better chances than, than they did. But football is all about taking your chances, and, and we didn't do that today, which was um, disappointing. But um, of course, we're going to be gutted. But you know, we played some some good stuff today. I think. Yeah, it felt like the, the shape of the side looked good, and the approach was good. Again, you're just lacking that cutting edge. Exactly, and like I said, that's 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 basically what what wins you games, and and we haven't got that at the minute. But um, it's definitely a big improvement today than our recent recent performances but um, like you said uh, you need to score goals to win games and, and they've done that and, and we didn't today. Yeah, You had to gamble didn't you and that's what, that's why they were able to get through with the counter attacks. Yeah exactly um, we pushed players forward and they were able to catch us in the counter a couple of times um, which was the risk but uh, everyone will be very disappointed um, but uh, like I said I think it's a lot of improvement in our, in our football today than recent performances which I think the fans can can take that away. And it's going to be a tough run into the end of the season because you're, just, you're playing for places now and there's, there isn't anything to directly chase. Uh, there's, always, there's always things to chase. I think we take one game at a time and we just want to improve as a whole team and just win as many games as we can for the, for the rest of the season. And like I said, we're going to take it game by game and um, hopefully we can build on the... the you know, perform, kind of performance there because um, I feel like it was positive in a way. Thanks, Colin. Thank you very much. Thank you. So what is there to chase then for Chelsea? What is left of this sorry season? We'll talk about that in detail. I think looking forwards and talking about the future for this football club, for these players, um, is important. But first, we have to reflect on this evening. And absolutely, you know, Conor Gallagher's right when he says there was improvements, yeah. but it's still exactly the same as we've talked about all season long. Mm. They create chances, they don't take chances, and the chances they created were really good. They did, they, they, they played well, particularly in the first half. Um, I thought Frank got the tactics right, but you can't discount for how low the confidence are in the lads in the sense that chances are falling and, and, and players should be doing better with it. Um, and it's difficult to know what the rest of the season is because if the manager was in place, you go, right, OK, we can't get into Europe, we're out of all competitions, but you know there could be players playing for their place. That you know you'd want some improvement, win games between now and the end of the season, some start change the formation maybe. But now because that's not in place, and a new manager, so you, when do they even start on the recruitment for next year as well? You know, or is that going to continue to be behind the scenes, taken out the hands of whatever manager's in charge? So it's hard to know what the season brings. It's a real tough job for Frank now because. It was tough motivating a lot, lot of the squad. 30 players is, in, a, in a squad is, is, is absurd because a lot of them think they should be starting, let alone just in and around it. And, and now, you know, how, how are you going to motivate them players? You know, they'll be, they'll be, on, they'll be on to their uh, travel agents now already thinking, you know, what am I going to do for the summer? Because it's, hard, it's, cause it's just a hard job for Frank to, to get a tune out of them for the rest of the season. But they've got to be professional. Some of them will be playing for their futures and trying, to, and trying to impress the next club. Some will be trying to stake a claim for, for whoever comes through the door. It's, a, it's, a, it's, tough. it's tough for the club. I it's think tough. that's what Frank will be saying. I think Frank's conversations with the players when he's in their meetings will be, listen, you don't, don't think about me. Don't think about me and my coaching staff. You've mm. got to think about yourselves now. Do you want to be here next season? Mm. And there'll be players in there who'll be answering that question with the way they perform and the way they apply themselves on a day-to-day -day basis. The ones you want to say. And there's inevitably going to be players, because there's that many players there, there'll be players there that'll be sitting there who've already had the conversations with their agents saying, listen, you get me out of this place as soon as you can, because I don't want to be here. I'm either not getting my chances or I'm not happy with the way they, the, the place has been run at the moment. And that's just a fact of life. That's what happens at football, football clubs. But it's about managing that now for Frank and in the best way possible that helps this football club to transition from this period now into what they'd like to think will be a better case scenario going into the new season. It's incredible, isn't it, how much of a mistake they've made buying so many players. Mm. And it's going to hit them where it hurts in the pocket because yeah. now they're going to have to get rid of players. Some players that won't want to leave, so they're going to have to pay them off. Mm. It's going to be, it's been a mm. real expensive mistake. Also, sorry, Mo, also, when you've got players sitting on the huge wages, we've got three or four, five, some six, seven yeah. years to on the contracts, great. right? You know, the, the, the problem you've got is who buys them Correct. for a big price yeah. and pays that amount of wages yeah. that they're on? Difficult situation.
Well, they don't, do they? They, no, they, they, they sit do. there, so they're going to have... This, this is going to have a lag, you know, a, a problem for a few years now. They're going to have players that they want out that they can't get out. Uh, they're going to have to get players out, so they might have to get some of the players that they don't really want to get rid of out. But how do they decide who to get rid of when they don't have the man mm. in place who's going to take them forwards? It almost well, I, feels like but, until but, yeah. that happens, you can't make the big decisions. Well, the manager never probably bought half of these anyway. So they'll probably... Mm. They, the, the chairman and, and the people around him probably bought most of these in. So I guess that they'll be deciding themselves on, on who goes as That's well. That's not working, The, 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 the problem is, is, is when you, I, I feel when you're, you're recruiting players, you recruit players for a certain style of football that you want to play and a certain type of formation that you might play. They haven't got a manager. So how are they going to be able to start that process of even thinking about players when they haven't got the manager? Unless behind the scenes there's a manager out of work right now who they could be talking to they know's in place and not pushing the button yet but they're getting things and in order for when they do press the button and say right you're in charge they've done all the groundwork behind the scenes maybe yeah but really would you if you was that manager and you're sitting there and you haven't agreed to deal for whatever reason you're still negotiating it you're not going to start working until you've signed your contract because you could do five or six works on recruitment then then the owners think for whatever reason I'm going to go with someone else mm. you know it's so they have to figure that there has to be a, a meeting where they go right. We, we, this is the time frame we're going to go to get the new manager in. As soon as the new manager's through the door, then we're going to start. We're not even going to think about who's coming or going until we get a new manager. Otherwise, it gets messy. A new manager walks in the door, he thinks he's getting four or five players, and he walks straight in the door and he goes, "Oh no, we're looking to offload player A, player B, player C." So you cannot, at a football club, do anything until you have a manager or a director of football who's going to drive where you're going from a footballing perspective. Feels like it's happening later this week. Talking about tonight, though, Frank came with a plan. The plan's worked. Chelsea have looked really good. Oh, they've had a couple of really, really big chances. I think um, we looked at his formation and his team selection before the game and questioned where would the goals come. Still, we haven't got a goal, but we've had opportunities. And what they've done really well is we talked about the fullbacks before the game. They've released himself and played high, brought the Real Madrid wingers who are dangerous on the other end of the pitch back to defend and nullified that threat a little bit. Yeah, we absolutely thought this was key, didn't we? Before the game, that Rhys James had to free himself of Vinicius and get forward. This is one of Chelsea's most important players in, a, in an attacking point of view. Uh, and OK, his, his touch, his cross, didn't quite work on the, on the first couple of occasions, but longer the game came, uh, went on, the more and more influence and impact he had on it. And then the two big, big chances came from this side of the pitch, Joe. Yeah, and, and Kante's got to do better. I mean, I mean, you can see that the, the box has worked well for Chelsea. They've had good control of the ball and it's allowed Reese to creep into these areas. This is Cucurella's chance. You know, that, that's, that's a full-back striker there. What a uh, save. It's a great save, but I, I think a, a, a top-quality striker there will just slide it underneath. The two big chances have fell yeah. probably to the wrong people. Exactly. You know I mean? Although they've got a lot of wrong people there. Yeah. There's only yeah. probably one or two. <laughs> Havertz is the only person. Well, so what's the atmosphere in that dressing room now? Is Frank saying this is brilliant, keep it up, or is there a sense of... Here we go again, creating chances we're not well, taking. I think he, Frank would be delighted with the start of the game. Yeah. And they're exactly where they want to be, you know, apart from going to goal up. And I think now Frank's looking at his bench and thinking, right, if we can, if we can start the half well, this crowd will respond. And then you've got Mudrick to come on. You've got lots of attacking options. And then you, but then you've got the threat from Real Madrid. And this could, because they always show this, don't they? We, 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 we all know this, the quality is there. And if you give them time and space to get their help and pick passes, they've got time here. This one off the post is a, a rasping shot here from, from Rodrigo. But they haven't been great, Real Madrid. They've, they've showed glimpses, but they haven't took real control of the game and you haven't thought Chelsea have been out of their depth. Chelsea away in this game. They've still got a chance to get goals, but they've got to be aware that there is moments of brilliance in this team and they've got to be aware of that. Yeah, they're always going to be dangerous scoring. I mean, those two chances, for me, I mean, they're never going in from those angles. The goalkeeper's got to be having a howler for that. This is the big chance from Vinicius. Mm. Um, it's a huge chance. Arguably the best chance of the day. Probably Conte's was, was the best, maybe. That's a massive chance. But I think, on the whole, Frank Lampard will be very, very happy tactically and from the chances they've One created. Chelsea goal. The roof lifts off this place. Mm. The whole atmosphere changes. They've just got to find a way to get the ball in the net. They do, they do and they do. But the, the positive thing is they've got options and they're, in, and they're in the ascendancy. I said I thought Real Madrid are in a sticky situation. They need to stick or twist. They've tried to stick. I don't think it suits the way they play. They're going to have to throw bodies forward in the second half. OK, and we'll find out what happens.
مانشستر سيتي يتقدم بخطط لزيادة سعة ملعبه أعلن مانشستر سيتي حامل لقب الدوري الإنجليزي الممتاز لكرة القدم تقديم خطط لزيادة سعة ملعب الاتحاد من 53500 إلى 600 إلى 60 ألف متفرج وتأتي زيادة سعة المدرج الشمالي ضمن تحديثات تشمل إقامة منطقة مغطاة لمشجعين تسع ثلاثة آلاف متفرج وفندقا يتكون من أربعمائة سرير ومتحفا جديدا وقال داني ويلسون المسؤول عن عمليات مانشستر سيتي في بيان على مدار عدة أشهر طورنا مفاهيم وتصميمات لتوفير أفضل تجربة للمشجعين وترفيه على مدار العام ليصبح ملعب الاتحاد وجهة ترفيهية ويسعدنا الآن تقديم خطط لتطبيق ذلك إلى مجلس مانشستر سيتي وملعب سيتي الذي شيد في الأصل لاستضافة دورة الألعاب الكومون نوليد 2002 هو خامس أكبر ملعب من حيث السعة في الدوري الممتاز بعد ملاعب مانشستر يونايتد وتوتنهام هوتسبور وأرسنال وويستهام يونايتد وقال السيتي أن التطورات المقترحة تمثل استثمارات تفوق 300 مليون جنيه استرليني ما يعادل 372 مليون دولار في شرق مانشستر وقد توفرت 2600 فرصة عمل جديدة في المجتمع المحلي وتستغرق عملية تطور الثلاث سنوات حتى تكتمل